No, that. That's now. No. 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 All right. It is seven fifteen, and we are starting the communication commission meeting. Uh, and we'll call to orders at seven fifteen. We have a quorum. So we'll proceed with uh, the approval of the agenda as presented and amended. Any questions or additions, deletions, Pam? Did you hear from our uh, school liaison? No, I did not. Uh, any additions or deletions? Do I have a motion to approve? Okay, Bob. Second. Second. Pam. Alrighty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Okay, now we have the approval of the minutes of the March 14, 2012 meeting. Any additions or deletions? Corrections? No. no. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Bob? Second? Second. Pam? Okay. And all in favor? Aye. All righty. It is passed. Thank you. Okay, uh, unfinished business. Um, there was an investigation of the possible grant funding that was mentioned at our last meeting. Um, I don't know, Pam, have you heard about that? Uh, just what I read here. Okay, um, and I was told that um, after a thorough investigation by the um, township and the um, school, that it really wasn't a grant as opposed to a loan. Mm -hmm. That had to be paid back at a future date, so that was not something uh, there was interest in. So I did want to follow through and look into that. There just wasn't any. And uh, so that's where we're at at that point. And uh, we had a review of the advertising policies that has been questioned uh, a number of times. And I have talked to the township um, uh, uh, lawyer, and I've been trying to get an appointment with him, but so far he says what we're doing is we're right on the line. We're not over the line as far as being inappropriate. So I'm going to and have an uh, appointment with him when he tells me his schedule, and we'll go from there. But uh, we have not dropped that. We're still reviewing it. Okay. I had something I wanted to add. Go ahead, Pam. Line up. Yeah. Is this working? Okay. Um, I, I believe I was the one that brought this up because it was questioned um, that some of the businesses are listed on a website and some aren't, and it was commented that the businesses that are listed <coughs> have some connection with the township. But I had passed out a paper um, from the Michigan Township Association using the township website as an economic development tool. And uh, then I had this little clipping from um, a township, a small township called um, let's see, Bryan Township in Kent County, where they invited the Chamber of Commerce to move right in the township hall so they could associate um, interchange. And I'm thinking that once you get an opinion from the attorney, if it said that we can be a little more open-minded, uh, I was thinking of inviting um, Opportunity Grosseal to come and just give a presentation. How can we help bring businesses to Grosseal through communication, or are we going to stay separate? So in a future meeting, once you talk to the attorney to see if this would be legally acceptable, um, I'd like to have a discussion on the future of supporting our businesses more on Grosseal. It seems to be some townships are doing that, and um, the Michigan Township Association had a full page on using the township website as an economic development tool. So it's out there. I just wonder what our policy, if we're still going to stay strong and stay separate or not. Well, uh, as soon as I uh, have my meeting, I'll report in. Uh, would you like to give your report tonight for your... your uh, it's just brief. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand the survey is going to come off, and that, that's good to get some feedback. 
And uh, I brought up at the last meeting uh, in March that um, I understood that Brian Loftus, now that he's retired, might offer a uh, show, a cable show, on listening in with Loftus would be non-political, but it would be from the supervisor's viewpoint, uh, from where he sits as um, the supervisor of the township. And then I had mentioned that maybe we could start up another Island Eye, keep it local, and um, just feature happenings on Gross Hill. Uh, the Eye stood for, in the old days, back in the 80s, and I think my last broadcast was 96, um, the I stood for information, interviews, and issues. And I invited anybody on our commission that would like to work with me. I didn't want to go solo, but I thought if anybody wants to work with me uh, to put together just an island happening type show uh, locally, um, accent on local that I would be open to uh, doing something like that in the future. Okay, wonderful. And um, I'm hoping at the next Township Board meeting that we might be able to fill these two vacancies. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that too tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay, Ted? I don't... I don't I don't have a whole lot, but uh, first of all, because I enjoy repeating myself for a millionth time, we, just as a definition of, of what's really going on, there is no advertising at this moment on the webpage. We have 84 businesses listed on the webpage. They are now on, if we go to the business section, they're on three different pages. We are in the process of working them out, getting them alphabetical, and trying to put them on one page. Uh, it's going to take us a couple of days, but as of right now, any business that has asked to be on the web page is on the web page. There's 84 of them. And I don't know if you go up and down Macomb and you see 84 businesses, but there are 84 gross yield businesses listed on the web page. So nobody has ever been turned down being put there. We just don't advertise. We don't put, you know, come shop here. We just have their listing, their address, and their phone number. And if they have a web page, we just take their name and link it to their web page. So that's what we offer, and that's what we're doing. So um, a lot of times people confuse the web page and the community bulletin board, and they're two different entities and two things separated. Um, the, the main thing I want to bring up today, and this kind of connects with what Pam just brought up about these shows, um, last in the March 26th Township Board meeting, where they had a three-hour discussion about road endings, was the cable budget changes. At our last meeting here at the Cable Department, the Board voted for a suggested budget, that budget was not adopted. The Brian Loftus suggested budget was adopted. And the main feature of that was the cable technicians, or the people that do all the work, was the budget was cut from 25000 to fifteen, which is bare minimum. So, you know, it'd be nice to, to do all these shows and stuff, but we're just not going to have the money this year to do a lot of extra outside shows. Um, you know, when we do one of these shows like the Island Eye or a Brian Loftus show, well, we haven't done a Brian Loftus show but back in the other previous supervisors, and you have three, two, three cameras and you roll the truck and you have a sound person and you set up an engine, you know, you have editing. These shows take cost somewhere between $250, $300 to produce, which is actually cheap in television world. But it, the size of our budget, on a monthly basis, where you have $1,200 to spend on a monthly basis if you don't do anything big like, you know, Island Fest or um, special, uh, you know, coverage of some event or something, you just, there just isn't enough money to do a you know, become a production and do a regular production. 
and that's what's going to suffer this year. We do not have a lot of money for technicians. And in television, you can go out and tape an event with one camera, but if you want to do a good job for a show, it take, you know you have pre-production things and and research and setting up crews. I mean, it, it takes a, it takes a little hunk of money to produce a TV show. But um, correct me if I'm wrong. If we we feel the need, we we can go back to the uh, trustees and discuss it. Well, it would be very reluctant. They don't. I mean, we have never gone back. Let's put it that way. We've never gone back and increased our budget for productions. But never say never. All right. But I'm just saying that what ha that's what happened in March. Our, the budget that you guys voted on in our March meeting was. Um, not rejected, it wasn't put into the budget, and, and it was supposed to be brought up that night, but it, it was so contentious about the other issue, they they argued about that issue for two and a half hours and finally just voted the budget in, and our our little change was never never materialized, so your suggestion, your suggested budget was uh, not voted in, so that's where we stand, we lost. We all lost ten thousand dollars. The, the money is still in the budget, but technically it's under a column for uh, capital improvement, which we haven't finalized or even actually worked on. So that's where we stand right now. Could I come? Please, Pam. Uh, Ted, if we do a couple of shows to show that we're doing local broadcasting. Uh, do you think we could revisit the budget and uh, they could adjust it? Yeah, anything's possible. I'm just saying that, that the township board has really never, I mean, we have never gone and said, well, we want to produce this show once a month and uh, it's going to cost this amount of money and this amount of time. Can we have more money? So it would be unprecedented, unprecedented but, uh, I mean, if that's your will, I mean, I'm not against it. But I just, what I just want to say is that we have a bare minimum budget for um, producing outside shows, which over the course of the last two or three years has not been the will of this, the commission. The commission's always said, well, let's try to get more and more and more, but uh, um, the money has been put in another line item, and, and it's not there for, you know, production purposes. Well... We, we can pursue that further. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, that, that's how, so basically with that in mind, um, we haven't done a lot production-wise since that, because I just, I really, I'm trying to save as much money as possible because there's a lot more stuff that happens summer and fall and winter than, than that's going on right now, so we're, um, we haven't done a lot. Um, there was one other item I wanted to mention. Island Fest? Well, I am trust we are going to cut down to the bare minimum. Uh, and Brian Loftus has brought up many times that we cover too much on Island Fest, so we're basically going to cover the parade and uh, the fireworks and everything in between the bands and stuff. And we might have a camera roaming around to to catch, you know, footage that we may use for another project. But uh, basically, we're just going to cover a couple of events, and we're not going to do the extensive. We were usually there Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, we're basically going to cover the the parade and and the, and the fireworks because uh, the parade is one of the big events, and fireworks is probably going to be bigger than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Tim Rooney and uh, the Island Trust staff is really working hard, along with Dr. Morris, and I think we're going to have a spectacular, uh, probably two or three times greater than we've ever had, and so. Wow. We're going to cover that. So that, that that's basically what I'm planning. And even that, if you take the fifteen thousand divided up by twelve months, that's going to be a peak month. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, a lot of people say you go cover the parade, but we spend all week calling the acts, making sure we have descriptions of the acts, doing pre-production, uh, you know, the setup time, and making sure you have some kind of presence with the set, making sure the truck works. So. You, you, with a television show, you just don't go out and turn a camera on. There's there's a lot of pre stuff and there's a lot of post stuff, and so that there's going to be a bulge, or you know, in the amount of money that we spend in uh, June, 
and that's going to probably have to come from what I'm not spending right now or what I won't spend in July. So, I mean, we've always gotten through and we'll get through, and I'm going to try to cover everything we did, but it's going to be, um, it's going to be a challenge. So that, that, you know, that's, that's where I want to start. Um, the other thing I wanted to report over the course of the last three, well, not the last two weeks, but three weeks before that, I've been, I started taking some, uh, classes for Final Cut Pro editing. Our editor, our editing system in the, uh, my office is, uh, it's not in the hospice yet, but it's going quickly. Um, it's dying. Different cards are, dying on me and it's changing colors and all kinds of stuff so um, I, I learned uh, how to do file cut pro because based on my research rather than by a big editing system the editing system we purchased in 2003 cost close to ten thousand dollars rather than duplicate that I feel that we could go if we get a large screen iMac and piece it together that way um, using file cut pro we could probably cut that replacement cost in half somewhere between thirty five hundred and five thousand dollars so that's what i'm working towards i haven't made any commitment but i have learned i went out and learned how to do file cut pro as an editing system and i really like it so so you did this on your own you went back to school to do well it? i got a buddy that uh, oh, took the four thousand dollar car course and so i had him come over to my house and we hook up. We hooked up a couple of IMACs and I took the course from him because he's certified. Uh, you know, so it I didn't cost us anything for me to learn it other than the time. So, so you, that was very ambitious on your part. Yeah, very ambitious. I, somebody told me if I quit changing, I'm going to die. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to kind of learn new tricks. A um, couple things that we did in the control room. I bought two monitors to replace aging. Televisions, they're dying. I bought them at Best Buy for $129. And so we have two new monitors in there. Um, we're cleaning up the web page. Uh, today we added information on the garage sale. So if anybody wants to, the garage sale is August 3rd and 4th. If you want to start registering, you can just click on the front page of the web page and there's a form you can fill out and send it to. Uh, uh, Carol, the other thing that we've done, we've put the entire new budget on the web page. Um, it's on the front page of the web page, and it's also on Brian Loftus's page. So if you want anything to do with the budget, that's on there. And the thing that I'm most proud of is starting with the annual meeting and the March 26th meeting. We are now uh, putting up the entire board packet, so there's all the information that the uh, trustees get is on a PDF form and you can you know, probably either the Friday or Saturday before the board meeting depending on when the clerk's office gets it uh, done we will have the entire board packet with every bit of information that Pam gets you'll be able to read at home and print it out and do whatever you want to with it so um, that's the first step in that process. The second step is we're going to develop a QR code that we're going to put on the front page that you can take your smartphone and if you have the barcode app you can um, scan this app and actually download the whole board packet into your smartphone. So if you, you want to take the board packet wherever you want to go it's up to you but we're looking for that's the next step. It's probably going to be a couple months down the road but we're going to get the system with the board and we're going to leave it up too so like the March 26th board packet is still up uh, as soon as we get the new one we'll switch it we're not going to archive them so you're going to have about two weeks to if you want the board packet we're not going to archive it but uh, if um, if you want it the same the same information that the township board's getting mm -hmm. you're going to be able to pick up off the web page now so uh, we, th we think that's uh, going to help a lot of the people that are interested in government. So uh, we got that. that. We that started with the annual meeting. But that's uh, commendable because I know you you were trying that about three months ago. You were asking all of us to talk to people about it. So that that turnaround was very quick. 
Well, that's the, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things we want to do. Like we're still looking into paperless meetings mm -hmm. that we think will save some money and time. Um, we're, I'm still talking with Udo O'Connor on that, and uh, we're working on that. So, uh, um, we, you know, we, I, I try to keep track of what, what's coming down. You know, like I said, looking down the road and try, you know, I try to get the information out of them. The last thing on this coming Monday, um, there's going to be an item on the uh, agenda about uh, the FOIA, and uh, we're going to reduce the cost of um, the uh, DVD reproduction. Uh, when we first offered DVD reproduction on FOIA, the technology was such that if it was a three-hour meeting, I had to play the three-hour meeting and record it you know, from disc to disc. And so if it's a three-hour meeting time, my salary plus the cost of the discs at one point were $5 for a replacement for a DVD disc. The cost of the machine was $2,000 to do it. So the cost of it, we were, we were sending it out there for $35, which was actually below what it cost. Me. And if we had a four-hour meeting or a six-hour meeting, even got we lost more money on it. So with the new technology, I now have a burner that I can burn five discs at a time. Uh, the discs have come down so you can get a hundred of them for if you look at Kmart or Office Max every once in a while at 19.95 for a hundred discs. And the sleeves instead of plastic are now paper and I can do them in six to, six to ten minutes. So the costs of them have come down greatly so they're going to reduce the cost. And that's what that's proposed on Monday. So, but it doesn't affect us in any way because none of the money comes to us. The money goes to the general fund. So. Can't we charge them for your time? I have suggested it, and uh, Just a thought. see that wall over there. Yeah, I, <laughs> I got an answer from that wall. <laughs> that they were, yeah, I, I, I agree, but uh, I just wanted you to know that's on the agenda for Monday, and. Uh, um, you know, it's a break. I, I'm sure there are other items that will go up as ours comes down, but uh, that's what's ha you know that's how that's going to affect us. But they w we wouldn't have to do that if, if people just took it off of the the web page. Well, there's no need to because yeah. now it's archived okay. and they can watch it at their convenience. In fact, to be totally honest with you, in the last 12 months, I was I was probably making 25 to 50 a year. Probably, I probably made ten last year because of because of the granite. So I actually think it's going to be a um, mute point mm -hmm. because uh, you can watch it anytime you want to. It is uh, wonderful on on, on granite. Mm -hmm. So that's basically it. So and if you want, I got copies here if you're interested of the the budget that was passed and the budget that we you guys suggested. If you if you want, I got I got copies here. Thank you, Ted. Okay, uh, the chairman's report. Well, I've been busy. Uh, we are good to go. Uh, everything has been, our, our survey has been uh, submitted to, uh, to Tim Rooney for channels. Uh, I spoke with him today. They will be editing it this weekend, and I think it will be out shortly. We are going to be doing our survey, and we're, we have three drop boxes, and I'll show them. And this is what they look like, uh, a little bit with the survey on them and GI. Looks like the, the old movie cameras. Maybe the kids won't know what they are. But we're hoping that they will uh, fill out their survey, drop it off at either the rec center, uh, the farm, or there will be one here at, at Carroll as you walk into Carroll's area uh, at, at Township Hall so that we can tabulate them. We'll leave it open for about a month. As soon as they come out, we will also, thanks to Sharon's excellent idea, we're going to have uh, additional ones sitting next to it in case people say, oh, I forgot to fill it out, and they can just dump it in, and we're, we're good to go. These were donated, so there's no charge. And I know our CPA is looking forward to reconciling all the information. He's anxious, anxious to do it. <laughs> but I'm really happy about that. I, that. I think we will find out what do the people in Gross Hill want. Do they, you know... Are they happy? Are they unhappy? You know, we're an open book, and we're willing to to and we will encourage everyone. We will be doing a little uh, a little commercial for this, and hopefully Ted will be able to play it uh, a few times to encourage people to come on out and help us with uh, their input because we need it. So that that's my part of it. And on a personal note, we lost power this week. 
for over nine hours. And thanks to the DTE little clip thing on our website, the little link, I found out when it was going to come back on and it worked great. So if anybody else out there uh, wanted to know when, when they were going to get it back, because it was an, over an hour to call them. And I thought, well, this is great. I went down to another area where they, they did have power, typed it in, and they told me when they were getting it and it came right on. So that, that's a very excellent tool for the community, I feel. And I just wanted to say on a personal note, I used it and it worked great. So that's that. Okay, new business. We have two vacancies on the commission. Um, I have spoken to uh, a few people who have shown interest, and I'm hoping by next month we will have participation for interviews. And I hope everyone, is, everyone out there is encouraged to participate and to fill out, come on down and fill out a form. It's also on our applications are on the website, uh, grossheel.com. So we need, uh, we have two openings, and they're going to go fast. So. What's the process? They fill out an application, mm -hmm. and then does it come to us? Uh, what happens is it goes to Carol, then it goes to the clerk's office, and they record it in. It is forwarded to me, and then I forward it on to the commissioners, and then we, we, I, we call the, the person in to have an interview. Oh, just like we did. Yep. And, and what we will do is, after we interview them, we will not make a decision till the next month. <laughs> yeah, so we will have time to... You know, discuss. So that that is the procedure at this point in time. But but I think we've got two vacancies, and it's a great commission. I hope people are interested in coming. Is there any? Chairman, yes. Uh, how about Richard Nielsen that did uh, come before us? Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, he he's still interested, oh. and I will call him to set up a time. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is there any uh, any other items that we we've, we've got to discuss tonight that I haven't thought of? Any other points of issue? Okay. Uh, public comment? Public comment? No public comment. Uh, our next commission meeting will be May 9th, 2012, if that's all right with everyone, 7 o'clock. Do I have a motion to adjourn? No. Ted. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was going to look this up. But, but uh, May 9th may be an Island Fest meeting. Okay. And if they, they're on TV because of the closest island pass, uh, I don't know if you want to keep, we can keep it the same day, A, not be on TV, B, go come earlier. No, well, we, can, we can just be somewhere else. Or, or C, okay. you, put, you know, whatever you guys want to do, I just want you to know they'll, they'll be on TV because of the closeness of. It, but will there be availability?